Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. But today is the first Sunday of the new year, 2022. So, happy new year. And happy and prosperous new year to you. May all your dreams come true this, this new year. May it be a blessing. May the Lord smile down upon you. May his, make his face shine upon you. May you have peace, prosperity, and good health. May it all be yours in the name of Jesus. See, this whole year is now before us. And the whole year is now behind us. So let us not be shackled to the hurts and disappointments of this past year. Let us not be discouraged by the failures and shortcomings of this previous year that has just passed by. And let, it, let the bygone be bygone. But rather, let us be encouraged in, in our Lord and Savior. Let us be encouraged in Jesus because God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? Let us wipe the slate clean, so to speak. And forgetting that which is behind us, let us strain forward. Let us strive towards what is ahead and press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called us heavenly word in Christ Jesus. I keep on reminding you that Jesus is coming back real, real soon. And his reward is with him. So hold fast to what you have and do not let anyone take it away from you because no one can just snatch it out of your hand and no one can just can, can snatch it out of God's hand. So if you're holding on to it and you're doing what it is that, that, that you're supposed to be doing, no one can take it away from you. So let us live in the now. Let us live in the blessings of the Lord. Let us work while we wait for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to return. My message today is entitled, Hold Fast. And we're going to take our scripture reading from Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. I'm coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. Jesus mentions this phrase, I am coming soon, four times in the book of Revelation. Apparently, the number four is used as a symbol of honesty and loyalty, meaning that the words spoken by Jesus are trustworthy. You can depend on it. You can trust it. You can take it to the bank. You can depend on what he said. There are many, many prophecies of the first coming of Jesus, and it was fulfilled over 2,000 years ago when Jesus was born in Migdal Eder wrapped up in swaddling clothes, and he was laid in a manger. Now, Jesus, again, is prophesying his own return. He said he will return soon. He repeats that exact phrase four times. The number, as I said, is connected with honesty. It's connected with loyalty. Jesus is an honest God. He does not lie. God is incapable of lying. And Jesus is God. This can only mean one thing. We had better mark his words. We had better prepare for his second coming. Because he said that he was coming the first time, and he did. He came to die. So how much more will he come back the second time to live? He's coming back for life. We're going to be with him forever and ever and ever in paradise. Forever. So how much more will he fulfill this promise? So the reminder or the word of warning comes with an extra word of caution. Look, Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. He says, hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. The word seize is an active verb. It means to take. It means to bring under one's control on one's own initiative. Meaning, if you don't hold fast to what is yours, you would let someone else grab, seize, or take control of what is yours. And on that same token, 
if someone can grab, seize, or take control of your crown, you also can grab, seize, or take control of someone else's crown. So we got to be doing what it is that God has called us to do. Otherwise, he will raise somebody else up to do what it is that he called you to do. Now, someone would ask, what crown are we talking about? Well, it's not the crown of life. No one can take the crown of life for you. But if you overcome, the crown of life is yours. I believe that the, the, the crown spoken of here can be one thing, only one thing, the crown of works. Look at two portions of scripture so I can prove this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 and verse 20. For what is our hope or our joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. The second witness is Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. According to our two witnesses, Paul is referring to his work as an evangelist. Therefore, if you do not work, someone else will swoop in and do the work that you should be doing and snatch the crown out of your hand. Now, it's, that's not, as I said, it's not the crown of life. Because if, if you overcome, the crown of life is yours and no one can snatch that um, away from you. You've worked for that. You've overcome so that is yours. You will live forever with the Lord Jesus. But the crown of good works, that's the one that we have to work for and make sure that somebody else does not snatch it out of our hands. So the warning is, do not let someone else come and dear what you have stored up, what you have built up. Work hard for the Lord. Do not get distracted by the temporal, but rather keep focused on the eternal because the eternal lasts forever. It's forever and ever and ever. The temporal is only here and now. It only lasts for a little while, a hundred years, maybe a little more, but only a short period of time when you compare it to eternity. So work for that that will last forever. Do not work for the temporal that will soon pass away. But someone will, will say, can, can that really happen? Can someone really snatch away your crown? Of course it can. Luke chapter 16, verse 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. Another verse says, The kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So, like Paul said, work for a crown that will last forever. Don't work for the temporal. Work for the eternal. If you do not do what God has called you to do, he will raise someone else up in your place, and they will do it, and the reward will be theirs. In other cases, you're the only one who can do what God has called you to do. And if you don't do it, you will miss out. And the worst part is, Maybe that person might miss out on it as well because you were called to do that certain thing and you refused to do it or you missed the opportunity. But someone would ask, but won't we have to cast our crown at the feet of Jesus? Well, nowhere in Scripture does it say that the saints cast their crown at the feet of Jesus. And I realize, yes, that it's preached and sometimes we even sing songs about it, but the only record of crown casting that I can find in Scripture is found in Revelation chapter 4. And we're going to read three verses out of chapter 4. We're going to read verse 4, then we're going to skip down to 9 and 10. So starting at verse 4, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. Verse 9. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne. 
It is the 24 elders who cast their crowns at the feet of him who sits on the throne, not the saints. I'm not exactly sure what crowns the elders are cast in, but as for you, you have worked for your crown. You keep your crown. Therefore, hold fast to your crown and do not let somebody else seize your crown for good work and evangelism. This is the perfect opportunity to make this a part of your New Year's resolution since this is the first Sunday of this new year. This is the perfect opportunity to work on it throughout the whole year and make your crown a beautiful crown. The second time Jesus mentions his coming soon is in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. The word blessed is characterized by happiness and being highly favored as by divine grace. Jesus says, if you want to be inwardly happy and have divine favor, then do what I have told you to do. When asked what is the greatest commandment of all, Jesus said the whole thing, everything is, is wrapped up in these two commandments. Let us read Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Paul echoed the same sentiment when he wrote to the Corinthians, the greatest of these is love. He said, these three remain, but the greatest of them is love. Love is the greatest commandment because everything, all the prophets, all the law, everything is wrapped up or hinges on this one thing. Love the Lord thy God. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So we would do well to quit letting society separate us one from another. They separate us with, with, with everything they can think of. We have to learn to love no matter what. Because we let society separate us by race. We let society separate us by nationality. We even let society separate us by denomination, through politics. They separate us with everything they can think of. And if they separate us, they will conquer us. Because united we stand, but divided we fall. Love is so important that Jesus told us that they will know who we are because of our love. Because of our love, one for another. Look at John chapter 13, verse 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. You see, in days gone by, it was an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But now, since the love of Jesus has risen in our hearts and risen in our souls, we forgive, we love, especially the brethren. Love is the glue that holds us together. So the third mention of his coming soon is found a few verses down. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. Now Jesus explains in this third, the, the, this third mention of his coming soon, the reason to hold fast is because he is bringing his recompense with him, meaning he will repay each and every one of us for what we have done, good or bad. Jesus is going to repay us for the works that we have done on this earth. So it would behoove us to do good works because we want to get paid a good repayment, a good recompense. So if you let someone else take your crown, as I explained earlier, they will be repaid for the work that you should have been doing. And they will receive the crown that you should be receiving. The recompense that you should have gotten, they will get. 
Or if you're doing evil works by killing people, by killing children, or enabling others to create laws to do such things, Jesus said he will repay according to your deeds. The head of who said that they're given certain things to children to kill them, which he claimed is not right. He said it's wrong. And I, rip, I, I put a link at the bottom of this so that you yourself can listen to it and determine for yourself. They protect the guilty and they condemn the innocent. Jesus said, that is wrong. He will repeat. Look at Jesus' last words. He just straight up warns us of his next coming. He said, I'm coming soon. Let us look at it. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus wants us to be ready for his return. He does not want to come back and catch us unawares. Jesus does not want us want to come back and find us not doing what it is that, that he's doing. He said, behold, I'm coming soon. Be ready. Get ready. I am coming back real soon. Do what I've told you to do. Love one another. Evangelize. Tell others the, the, the good news. Spread the gospel. He wants us to hold fast to what we have, to what we have worked for. And do not let someone else snatch it out of our hands. Look at the progression. The first time Jesus warns us that he's coming back real soon, he also encourages us to hold fast to what we have because he's on his way back. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to have our rewards. He wants to give us good rewards. He does not want to, 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 to condemn us. He wants us to be ready for his return. The second time he tells us that he's coming back real soon, he said, blessed is the one who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. And in order to keep the words of the prophecy of this book, we have to love. We have to love one another because everything hinges on love. The third time, Jesus gives a little stronger warning. Matter of fact, he just lays it out there for us. He says, he's coming real soon, and he's bringing his reward with him. Good or bad, you will be repaid for what you have done. Therefore, hold fast to the good you have done, and continue to do good, and even more so as you see that day approaching. The fourth and final warning was basically a reiteration of his previous warning. He says, behold, I am coming soon. And he just leaves it like that. But people will say, oh, he's just saying that because it's been a long time now and he still hasn't returned. Well, Peter straightens that out for us. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burnt up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. The Lord is not slow to fulfill what he said he will do. He's not slow in fulfilling his promises. He just desires each and every one of us to come to repentance, to get right with him, because he loves us, and he knows what awaits us if we reject the life that he is offering us. He knows that there's a fiery lake that awaits each and every one of us, and this lake of fire it burns with fire forever and ever and ever. And if you go there, you will live forever and ever in torment in this lake of flames with an utter darkness. The heat is forever. And Jesus do not want us to go there. That's why he came and he paid that, that, that terrible price, that high price. He was beaten for us. He was bruised for us. He, he, he was so, so marred that he, he was unrecognizable. He was beaten so badly. He was whipped, spat upon. He suffered disgrace for us. He was nailed to a cross to purchase life 
for us, that we might live forever. And if we reject that, there's nothing. The, the song says, what more do you want him to do? Jesus could do no more. He did everything he could to give you life and life more abundantly. And if you reject that, you reject life. And there's nothing else he can do. But for those who have accepted his free gift, there is pure joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's peace. There's blissfulness. No more sorrow, no more hurt, no more pain, no more worry, no one being angry. Everything will be blissfulness forever and ever and ever. Wouldn't you like to live in a place like that? I surely would. I, I love the thought of eternity. You know, I, I've, I've been up and I've been down. And up is much better. And that's what eternity is, even more. So I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of those who, that what God has stored up or has planned for us in eternity. We can't even begin to imagine how beautiful it will be, how peaceful it will be, how much joy there will be. Our loved ones who have died in the Lord will be there, will be united with them. Friends who have died in the Lord will be there, will be united with our loved ones again. My friend, Jesus is on his way back. His rewards, good or bad, will be with him. For those who hate him, they despise his coming. But for those who love him and who are waiting, we wait patiently for his return because we love his appearance. We love him because he first loved us. Look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. It says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. We too will echo those words. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. So, are you thirsty? Have you drunk from the free water of life? If you haven't, let today be that day. Or maybe you have, but maybe you have drifted away from God. And maybe God is calling you back. Let today, this first Sunday of the new year, be the day that you return. Or maybe you haven't drifted away. Maybe you have just stopped working. Maybe you have stopped holding fast to that which you already worked for. I would encourage you to continue to hold fast. Continue doing the good works so that nobody will snatch your crown out of, out of your hand. Continue to spread the good news. Continue to share the gospel. Continue to tell of the good thing that the Lord has done for you. But if you don't know who Jesus is, if you don't, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. Don't let your opportunity or this opportunity pass you by. Grab hold of this opportunity. You might not get a second chance. For some, this could very well be your last opportunity. Just a few days ago, Betty White passed away. She had, she was, what, 19 days away from her 100th birthday? She had many, many plans. She, she had um, all kind of plans to celebrate that 100th birthday. But she didn't see, she didn't even see the new year, just hours away from the new year, 2022. She passed away. What I'm saying is, tomorrow's promise to no man. Today is the day of repentance. You know, we, we, we also had a young lady that worked for my, uh, my company, the company that, that I worked for. And um, she worked in another place, she didn't really know her, but she wore Christmas. Tomorrow is promised to no man. 
Do not put off eternity. Do not keep rejecting the Lord. But if he's calling you, answer. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. You know, we, we have many, many plans. You know, we say we're going to do this and that. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. But the truth is, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't even know what the next few seconds hold for us. The next hour, we have no idea. So it would behoove each and every one of us to ensure that we are ready for, for, for Jesus to return. Ready when he split that eastern sky to come back for his own. Because this is our opportunity. Today is the day of repentance. So, if you would like to know Jesus, I would encourage you, do it today. Do not let today pass without you knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you would like to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me. Confess with your mouth. Believe with your heart. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Forgive me of my iniquity. I'm sorry for what I've done. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price and giving me the free gift of life. I accept it now. Lord, I ask you to help me to receive the crown of life. Help me to hold back that I might receive the crown of work, the crown of uh, evangelism. And I thank you in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, the Lord faithful and just will forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all of my sins. I would encourage you to get, get your Bible out. If you don't have a Bible, go. Go today. Go, to, or, or, or go tomorrow. Buy yourself a Bible and read that Bible every day this year. Highlight the promises. Highlight the, the, the verses that are meaningful to you. Memorize them, that when the evil one comes in and tempts you, you can have scripture to combat what it is that he's trying to get you to do. You can overcome sin and temptation by the word of God. They overcame by the word of their testimony and the word of God. God's word is strong. It's sharp. It's active. It's a double-edged sword. It will defend you. It can attack the enemy. It can go into the enemy's camp and take back that which was stolen from you. The word of God is strong. Memorize it. Use it. It's your weapon against the enemy. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. And from my family to your family, we want to wish you a happy and prosperous new year. And May the blessing of the Lord be yours, and may all you do be successful. I'm Kenny Yates. This is this is Hold the Hope.